Hello, St. Mark's. This week we have the prize edition from the hymn quiz. As you may remember, Anne and Jerry Shepherd, who are long-term members of the choir, won the prize. Well, I called them to congratulate them and to ask them what topic they wanted me to cover as their prize, they suggested the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I told them this was an absolutely perfect hymn for a number of reasons. One of those reasons is that this is a hymn beloved not only by our church community, but also by the school. Uh, when we're able to come together for school Eucharist, we sing this hymn quite a bit on Friday mornings with the all school Eucharist. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing's text was written by Robert Robinson. He comes from a poor background in London, and at the age of 14, he was apprenticed to a barber and hairdresser. Uh, he fell in with a bad crowd, didn't live the best life, but then he was converted by George Whitefield, a famous Anglican cleric and one of the founders of Methodism. Uh, eventually, Robert Robinson went on to become a Calvinistic Methodist minister. The text was originally written for Whitsunday, which is also known as Pentecost, and the theme of the hymn is God's providence or God's protection and grace. And it has many similarities to John Newton's Amazing Grace. Some of you may know this text from another hymnal, from another tradition, and the original text included the, the word Ebenezer. And, you know, I think our hymnal editors edited that one out because nobody knows what an Ebenezer is other than the first name of Mr. Scrooge from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. But in a biblical sense, an Ebenezer is a stone altar which is built in gratitude to God for God's protection and safety on a journey to a certain point. And so, you know, if you encountered wild beasts or if you encountered flood on a journey, if you make it through safely, you would build this altar in gratitude to God. So by raising his poetic Ebenezer, uh, Robert Robinson confesses that he is a great debtor to the grace of God, as are we all. Now, this tune is very, very interesting. It's an early American tune. It's authentically American, written here in North America, uh, likely in the early 19th century. But this tune is hard to track down because if you are a scholar looking for information, it has so many different names because it's been published so widely in so many hymnals from so many denominations that uh, finding a unified name for the hymn is almost impossible. So here's the list of tunes. It was originally called Hallelujah. Problem number one, that's a very common name. But the other names that, it, it, that were used with this hymn include Sinner's Call, Good Shepherd, Female Pilgrim, Fount, Stanhope, Come Ye Sinners, Living Waters, Parish, Mullins, and Bartimaeus. However, we eventually all agreed that this hymn tune has a unique name of Nettleton. This honors Asael, Asael Nettleton, who was a well-known evangelist and compiler of hymn texts. However, strangely, this tune never appears in any of his books. So we have no idea how this association came into being, but almost all modern hymnals agree that this tune is called Nettleton. In the Episcopal tradition, this hymn first appeared in the hymnal from 1826, going back to that early 19th century origin. So in many hymnals or hymn collections that include this text, it's published in what we would call shape notes. So unlike our hymnal 1982, or my Bach scores, or my Franck scores, or Handel, or any of those guys, this is a unique music notation system. It uses the traditional clef, bass clef, and treble clef. But if you look at the notes, they look a little different. I'll show you an example on the screen as I talk. If you look at the note heads, rather than being simply open or closed, You'll notice that they have triangle shapes or square shapes or um, you know various other shapes and that tells you the degree of the scale 
And what do I mean by scale degree? I mean do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, solfege. It's not just a cute song from the sound of music. It is a useful musical tool. Um, so the shape of the note tells you which scale degree to sing. So if you see a certain shape, you know that it's fa. If you see another certain, if you see a square or something, you know it's a, a different syllable. In churches that sing these shape note hymns authentically, what happens is the song leader will give pitches sings the chords uh, on the various syllables, and then let the congregation sort of hum on their syllable and come to an agreement about the chord, and then they sing. But the first thing you hear is not actual words. They're singing these solfez syllables, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, as they go through the hymn. And then the second verse, essentially, is the hymn text. So I was able to find a video of a group of modern singers sitting in a beautiful whitewashed church singing this in a traditional way. So after you're done with this video, you can click down in the description box below and listen to them sing this hymn as it would have been heard in the early 19th century. Uh, one last fact about this hymn is that it is so popular with modern hymnals that it is in almost every denomination's hymnal. So if you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, you know, Episcopalian, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, there we all sing this hymn. We all love it. And so it, it's sort of one of the great um, unifying hymn tunes in, in American culture today. Thanks again to all of you who played along with the hymn quiz. This has been a fun project, and maybe we'll do some more quizzes in the future. Congratulations to Anne and Jerry for winning once again, and thanks for giving me such a fun topic to discuss. I recorded the hymn at the church earlier this week, so you can sing along. The words are down in the description box, or you can turn to hymn number 686 in your hymnal if you choose to do it that way. Don't forget that after you finish this video to go down in the description box and listen to that authentic uh, shape note singing. Thanks, St. Mark's. We'll see you soon.
evaluating my work. I am. Are you subscribed? I will with a red button. And give us a thumbs up. I'm a fan. Of course.